Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. So this has been a really, really highly requested video that I am going to be filming today. So I've got my notepad and I'm sure that you can tell from the title of this video what this is going to be all about and it's going to be about my tips, tricks, behind the scenes of everything that goes into my Instagram and creating content. So I'm going to be giving you a really in-depth about like my tips, my secrets, my process of how I shoot content for my Instagram. We're going to be going all the way from how I get my inspiration to how I edit to how I plan my feed, um, posting and everything like that. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you do and we'll jump straight into it. So I've written everything down on my notepad just to make sure that I don't forget anything. So if you see me glancing down it's because I've literally written it like in order of what I want to talk about, um, kind of the, the process that goes into creating content um, and creating each image. Um, so I don't want to miss anything else. I've literally like, written it down to make sure that I know exactly what order we're going in so that I can talk it through step by step. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is inspiration. Now I get loads of questions about where I get my inspiration from, what inspires me, you know, how do I come up with these concepts? Um, and it's a bit of a mixture really. Um, the best advice I would give is to start a mood board. Now there's loads of different places you can start mood boards. Obviously Pinterest is like the biggest one um, and it's the one where a lot of people go to. I love Pinterest but I personally don't use it Maybe not to its full capacity for Instagram content, but I do find that like it repeats a lot of the same images um, and I do struggle sometimes to find new ideas. Um, there's clearly like a kind of aesthetic on Pinterest and sometimes I feel like I'm just being given repeats of the same image from the same people um, and it's not really giving me anything new. Um, and I don't know if it's because I don't pin that much that kind of things. Like I pin loads of home content and stuff and like interiors. So obviously it shows me a lot more interiors. Um, so when it comes to the fashion stuff, I don't find that the algorithm picks up on what I want. Um, maybe I need to use it better, but I know a lot of people do use Pinterest. I personally don't find it the best thing with regards to inspiring me for Instagram content. I find the best thing that inspires me is Instagram itself. Um, so I have lots of different um, saved folders that I have in my Instagram and I use them for inspiration. So I've got one which is all about like travel. If I know I'm going to a specific city, so like Paris, I did a massive Paris inspo board of like shoot locations that I saw and I saved loads and loads of images from that, um, like detail shots, flat lays. Um, interior content so I have loads of different saved folders in my actual Instagram and then if ever I scroll through a picture that I really really like I'll add it into the saved folder and when I say a picture that I like it can be anything that I like about the image so I might literally just like the pose that they're using and I'll think to myself I really really like that pose or how they've kind of like shown off the boots or I really like how they've like flown out the dress or something like that or it could be the positioning so I really like how, the angle that the camera's at or I really like the kind of like perspex that they're giving for the image um, so I'll save images for loads of different reasons and then whenever I'm trying to come up with concepts and stuff I'll go back into that folder look at the kind of vibe that I like look at what I saw um, and I'll kind of go from there um, sometimes when it comes to imagery I literally just something comes to me and I'm like do you know what would be really cool is if I did a photo like and so sometimes it literally doesn't come from anything at all but I just think when it comes to inspiring yourself you want to give yourself like a really big mood board and a big platform that you can look back at images that you think you really like and that really inspire you and then you can look back on it and it can just spark a bit of creativity in you so that's always the best advice I would give is just to create a mood board save a load of images that you think are really cool or that you like or that give you inspiration and then you can go from there but one thing I will say is do not copy there is no point in copying on Instagram let's be honest like it's a platform for creativity and if someone sees that you've done the exact same image as someone else it's not going to play well. Um, I always think it's great to get inspiration and if you do want to like basically recreate an image that's fine I think as long as you tag that person. Um, so I've done a couple of things where I got inspiration from other people like I'll do I don't know I saw someone do a car shot and I think oh that looks really cool and I'll do a similar car shot but I will always put inspired by and I will tag them if I do something really similar to what they did because otherwise I just think it's a little bit like really you know we're not children like if you get inspiration from someone be sure to give them the credit be sure to tag them even if it's in like a story or in a description make sure to give them the credit that they deserve for inspiring you 
So once I've kind of done that and I've saved a lot of inspiration and I've kind of like got my creative juices flowing, I will move on to outfit planning. Now, I'm gonna talk about this in two different ways, how I kind of normally do it and how it's working out in quarantine, um, because obviously it's very different now to how I would normally be when I'm like out street star shooting. So let's talk about when I go out to street star shoot and when I'm like going out to London to get my content. So I usually shoot once or twice a week um, and I will do like full day shoots. Um, they're my favorite way to shoot. I just think if you have a whole day, you go like into London, you bring lots of outfit changes and then you can get inspired by what's around you. You can get inspired by kind of like your location. You can move different locations and that's just my favorite way to do it. Everyone's different. I know some people that prefer to literally go out one outfit a day, shoot it and go home. Um, so it's totally up to you what you prefer. I prefer going out and doing like a full day shoot and what I would do is outfit plan the however many outfits. It's usually about four or five, sometimes I can squeeze in six depending on like timing and where we are and blah blah blah. Um, but I will plan every single outfit in advance. Now sometimes it's quite easy to plan outfits because it might be a campaign that I'm shooting and it's for a particular brand and they want me to focus on a particular piece, let's say like denim. So I'll have all the outfit planned with them because I would have requested the items and everything like that. And then other times it's me coming up with the outfits completely by myself and just going through my wardrobe and seeing what inspires me. Um, so I'll put together maybe like four or five outfits and I'll bring them into London and then I'll also plan them. So I know, okay, first location, first shoot, I'm gonna be shooting shooting my Burberry coat. Second location, I'm gonna do the campaign shoot. Third location, I'm gonna shoot a dress. And it just means that I have everything planned so that when I'm there, I have as little time as possible to faff around. And I just know it's in the suitcase, it's there. Whip it out, change into it, shoot it, and we're on to the next one. And I find that's the best way to operate for myself. Um, obviously everyone's different, but I would, would just not recommend choosing your outfits when you're there. I know a few people that literally will just shove their suitcase full of clothes and then they'll come up with outfits whilst they're out on a shoot. And I'm like, how? It just, that blows my mind. I don't know how people do that. Um, so I like to plan them all in advance and then I have a rail in my room and I just have them all in the rail and then it can spark inspiration. And also one thing I really like to do is mix and match my clothes. Um, so you'll notice on my feed, I rewear things a lot. And I'm not the kind of person that will wear an outfit once and then never wear it again. Like I will wear an outfit and then think, okay, how do I wear the top differently? How do I wear this blazer again? How can I mix and match? Um, so I like to have everything on a rail and then sometimes even in the same shoot day, I could shoot the same piece three times. But because I've changed it up with different outfits, I've styled it differently and you probably wouldn't know that I'd literally brought out the same pair of jeans. If that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. But I like re-wearing clothes and re-wearing outfits and styling them up in different ways. I just think that's a really, really important way for me to work. Um, and it just shows how wearable pieces are. I mean, I'm all about cost per wear, so. Yeah, that's what I tend to do for like when I'm out of quarantine at the moment as we're not really going anywhere. My outfit planning isn't as like vigilant um, and I can kind of just pick and choose as I'm going. Um, so I'm shooting a bit more regularly now in the sense that like it's not like two set days, um, but I am still doing like maybe a few outfits at a time just because for me, usually the first outfit or like the first shoot, I'm just like, I really have to force myself to get into it. I really have to force myself to like shoot the photo and then once I've kind of got that first one shot and I'm happy with it that's when my creative juices start flowing and I'm like oh okay I really like how I did that maybe I could start it with this and maybe I can piece it with that and oh I wonder if this pose would look good um so I do like a few shots at once um and that's kind of just the way that I like to work so I'll still kind of go through my outfits maybe piece things together put them on the rail see how they look it's just not as like regiment as it was when I was having to like literally leave my house go into London and shoot the content um, but I would definitely recommend like planning your outfits and seeing what works together what can be styled together and then you just have a much more like set plan for when you're going to shoot another thing I like to do is match my outfit to locations um, or in my house to like rooms or backgrounds um just because I really like my feed to look as cohesive as possible and I put so much thought into it that I just want it to look like I had put thought into it I don't want it to look like I've thrown it together um so yeah I like to like plan it depending on where it's going to be um so like some things that I've done is I really like a whimsical background so I wear like a pretty flowy dress or you know or maybe I'm in my office and so I'm wearing something a bit more like work wear appropriate um so I do like to match my outfits to my backgrounds um and that's another way that I like to work on my feed so that's kind of all about like the outfit planning and the styling up of pieces I'll always do that before I shoot 
just so that I have an idea of what works together, what goes together, what will make a cute outfit, and then it means that when I actually come to shooting, I can focus as much on the creativity in that sense, rather than trying to pair a pair of jeans with a nice top. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I wanted to go on to is shooting. So I'm going to talk about all oh, how I shoot my content, um, what I do to like get images, um, and how that comes about. So normally, <laughs> when we're not in quarantine, um, I would go out and shoot with other bloggers. Now I know some people choose to pay a photographer, um, hire someone else to shoot their content. I personally don't like doing that because I am very, very particular about my feed. I'm very particular about my edit. I'm gonna go on to editing in a minute. Um, and I just think that it's my creative space that I would have as much control over it as possible. So I personally prefer shooting with other bloggers because it means that you have complete say over direction, style, setup, you know, you can kind of be like, right, I want to shoot this dress in this way. Can you please, you know, bend down? I want it a low angle or can you stand there? I want it from that direction. And then you can kind of have as much control over the image as possible. And then when it comes to editing, it's all your own edit. I also like it because I just find it really sociable and I'm quite a sociable person. I like going out and meeting with friends and going for coffee and I find shoot days are basically one big day of fun. If you're shooting with another blogger, you're both doing this job because you love it and it's like your passion. So when you're shooting, you're having as much fun as possible. And there are days where it's like maybe a bit stressful or it's really cold. And you really can't be bothered and you're both in a bad mood and you barely talk to each other. But there are some days where you just laugh all day and the shoots are hilarious and people are getting in your way but it's funny and you're changing a really gross Starbucks toilet and you can both laugh about it and have a lot of fun. So that's my personal favourite way to do it. Um, and if you're wondering like how you would go about messaging someone or asking them do you want to shoot together, there's loads and loads of blogger groups that I would recommend joining. The main one is the Creative Gal Gang. It's run by my good friend Kelsey, she's an absolute babe. And she's grown this group from like a few hundred to I think there's over a thousand people in the group now. And they have, it's a Facebook group as well as having its own like Instagram page. Um, but if you join the Facebook group, there is the Creative Gal Gang and then the Creative Gal Gang UK. Um, and if you're looking for someone to shoot with, I would definitely recommend it joining the UK group. And you can literally just post in there and say, hi guys, is anyone around on Wednesday to shoot? Would love to meet up for a coffee. I have this camera, we can work together. We can shoot some content. And then people might reply being like, hi, yeah, I can meet in London or I'm in Manchester, I can meet there. And it's a really, really great way to meet new people. Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's like looking for people to shoot with. And it's such a great way to kind of like put yourself out there, but not feel vulnerable whilst you're doing it. I know that if you like reach out to someone, sometimes it can feel a bit nerve wracking. Whereas if you're in a big group and you're all in the same kind of boat, it's a lot easier. Now, with regards to what camera I shoot with, I brought it out actually so I can show you. I use the Olympus Pen and I have two lenses that I like to shoot with. So I'll talk about the camera body a little bit. Now, I was really tossing up whether to get a DSLR or whether to get a small point and shoot camera. Now, People are going to have really mixed opinions about this and people are going to have very strong opinions but I'm just going to tell you about what works best for me and what I have found from my research. So with this technology and with, with the technology that has come about these days, the difference between a DSLR and a point and shoot is it's not big enough for me to justify the price difference, the size difference and the weight difference. A DSLR is much bigger, much heavier, and you need a lot more skill to be able to shoot with it. Whereas a point and shoot is a lot more straightforward and a lot lighter, so it's easier to carry about. And I just personally think it's a lot better for the job that I do. Now, if I was a photographer myself and I was improving my skills and I was, you know, working with the camera, then sure, I'd go for a DSLR. But part of the biggest thing with my job is I have to hand the camera over to someone else. Whether that's my mum, my boyfriend, another blogger, a friend, my self timer, I have to hand the camera off to somebody else. So I thought to myself, well, if I'm gonna have to hand over the camera to someone else, I want it to be as easy to use as possible and for you to need as little skills to use it as possible, if that makes sense. So I personally went for a point and shoot and the best one that I found was the Olympus Pen. Now I have the, it says something like the Olympus Pen EPL8. I know there's a few different bodies um, you can get. I think this is just exactly what you need. Um, it's fairly cheap as cameras go. I know that obviously like it is still quite expensive, um, but as cameras go, it is a really, really good camera for a very, very affordable price. Hence why 99.9% .9 of bloggers use it. <laughs> 
So I wanted to talk about the two lenses that I think are just the best to use, especially if you're new, you're just starting out, and you're kind of like finding your feet with this. So the first lens that I use is the 17mm lens. Now this is, both of these lenses actually aren't ones that you can adjust. So there is a kit lens that comes with the camera, and I literally don't think I've used it since I got the camera. I may as well sell the lens. Um, but it's the 14-45mm. And basically what that means is you can change like the zoom, you can change the kind of like background and everything like that. Um, but that requires a lot more skill. These lenses are basically foolproof because they are already set up and you barely have to do anything with them, which is what I love about them. So 17mm, I'm going to put a couple of images here so you can see the kind of vibe that you get from this. So it's technically a wide angle lens, which I know sounds really scary. And when I heard it was wide angle lens, I was like, I don't want to look wide in my images. But what it means by that is it's really good for like street style photography. It's really good for more like, what's the kind of vibe I'm talking about? very difficult to explain. Hopefully you'll be able to see from these images the kind of vibe that it gives you um, and the kind of images that you get from it. But I really like this for like doing full outfit shoots, for doing street style, for doing maybe like edgier photos. I think it's really, really great for that. And then the second lens is my 45mm lens. Now this one is probably my favourite lens out of the two. It's a lens that I love and hate. So I love it because it creates really, really amazing blurry backgrounds. Again, I'm gonna put some images here so you can see the kind of photography that it creates. And they create really amazing backgrounds. It's really, really simple to use, but you have to stand about a mile away <laughs> from the person that you are shooting. So to get this kind of like shot, do you need to be really far away from the person to get that blurred background and like the sharpness in the front and to get that like 3D effect? you need to be really far away from the person that you're shooting. So it can be a bit annoying if you're like, say, street star shooting and they have to be on the other side of the street and you've got to wait for no cars to be there to try and get the shot or, you know, people, like if you've got the 17 mil lens, you're quite close and people can see who's shooting who and people will walk around you. 45 mil, they might not notice because they're so far away and people will often like walk in front of me and you just go kind of like stand there and wait for the crowd to pass. Um, so I hate it in that sense, but I love it because I just love the imagery that it creates. Um, and I've actually been using this for a lot of my home content, um, but it is quite difficult because you do have to try and get the camera as far away as possible. So I'm usually standing on one side of the room and the camera is literally all the way on the other side of the room to try and like get full body in. But I just love the kind of imagery that it creates. It's very much my vibe. And I think that it looks really professional without it being really complicated to get. So I would definitely recommend these two lenses. I'm gonna link all of the camera equipment and everything that I use down below so that you can shop it yourself um, if you are interested in getting some camera equipment, if you are new to this, or you are looking to make an investment into your vlog. Now, with regards to home content as well, the other thing that is so important to talk about is a tripod. I can't show you it because you're on it right now, um, and I do use it for both Instagram content and for like YouTube. Um, and I'm gonna link the tripod that I use below. Now, I did, I say I invested. I actually I actually got this as a birthday present from my sister very sweetly she asked me what I wanted and I was like do you know what I want a tripod um, and she is amazing at research and getting the best of the best of the best and this tripod is honestly amazing I used to have a really really old flimsy really crappy tripod that was just not worth the time of day um, and so I was just getting so fed up with it and she basically looked into where the best places to buy tripods were, the best tripods, and got me this one and it is absolutely fabulous. It's really, really sturdy. It's really easy to use. I, I hate ones that are like twisty and you have to really faff about with, like make it higher and lower and you know, getting the right angle. Um, it's really, really simple to use and so, so handy. It's literally been an absolute lifesaver in quarantine. I honestly wouldn't know how I would get my imagery without it. A lot of people might think Think, why don't you just ask your boyfriend to shoot um but alex has his own job he is still working from home as well and it's very unfair for me to say sorry once you've finished your meeting can you just take half an hour to help me with my job so i try and do it as much as i can on my own i think that's like the best way to do it you know it's it's my job and i don't need to i don't want to rely on anyone else to get my imagery so yeah, tripod, and then the other thing that I am using at the moment, which actually is another reason why I absolutely love the Olympus Pen, is the self-timer option that it has. Um, so instead of just using like a normal self-timer, setting up the shot, having to run back and forth, there is an app on it. It's called, what's it called? Um, Olympus Share. 
and it's basically an app that you can download onto your phone and then you can put the Olympus onto its own Wi-Fi mode and you can link your phone to your camera and then it means that you basically have a remote control in your hand so you can see the camera but you're still holding your phone and then you can stand in position set it all up and then you can set the self timer and quickly put your phone to the side and like you're not running back and forth and you can literally see exactly what the image looks like so i really really love that aspect um a lot of the images like i'll show a few here a lot of these images that i do I'll actually deliberately position myself so that my hand is like, so that I have my phone in my hand, my hand's just out of the camera so you can't see that I'm holding my phone and then I can literally see what the image looks like and then you don't know that I'm doing it on my phone. Um, so a lot of images you probably see at the moment, especially like in quarantine and at home, people are holding phones and people just think like, oh, it's just a kind of like, oh, I'm scrolling through Instagram. No it will be them using the app and then wanting to see exactly what the image looks like. So that's a really great aspect of the Olympus Pen and another reason why I think it's such a good camera to invest in. I'm gonna need the biggest glass of water at the end of this because I'm just non-stop talking. But the next thing I wanted to talk about is editing. So this is the question I get asked most on is how do I edit, do I have a preset, do I sell my own preset? Do I have I bought a preset? Blah, 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 blah. So I thought I would talk exactly through today what I do to edit my photos and how I get a cohesive feed. So that's another question I always get asked is how does your feed always look so cohesive? And it's all in the edit. So, so it's gonna be no surprise to you guys when I say that the best app that I would recommend downloading and using to edit your imagery is Lightroom. It is honestly a fail safe. It's the best editing app that is out there. It's um, a Adobe owned um, software. I think it is a software. Anyway, it has its own app. And you can either pay a subscription for it or you can use the free version. Now I paid for a subscription for about four years and I'm not gonna lie, I feel like it was a waste of money. I didn't need the full subscription. A lot of the editing that I'm doing can be done in the free version. So I think that the, the payment for it is quite a lot and I probably wouldn't recommend using the paid version. I would recommend, especially if you're new and you're just starting out, getting the free version, see how you go with the app and then if the capabilities aren't as complex as you want them to, you can maybe look at investing into a subscription for Lightroom. But I personally now just use the free version and that is absolutely perfect for me. It has everything that I need for my edits and it is perfect. Now, going on to actual editing. I have my own presets that I do sell. I'll link them down below if you do want to shop them and I use them for each of my images. Um, now I like my feed to look really really cohesive and look like it all flows together and I think the best way to do that is to use a preset. If you don't know what a preset is, it's basically a pre-edit. So all you need to do when you download the app is you upload an image onto it, you click on the preset and all the edits will just add on to the photo. So say that you want like it's warmer, you want the contrast down, you want... I don't know, the yellow's down, you want the greens up, you want a bit pinky tone, the preset will be already sorted and you literally add in all of these things happen in one go. Now I personally sell three different kinds of presets. I have a glow preset, which is my favorite one. I use that for all my travel content, a lot of my street style content, um, and even a bit of home content. I've got my I've got my indoor pack, which is obviously the perfect one for at home shooting. It is specifically designed for when I'm shooting at home and I want maybe a bit more of a minimal edit, you know, that you've not got as harsh lighting when you're indoors um, and everything's just a little bit different. So that's um, my indoor pack and then I have my uh, moody pack which is for those kind of like grungier images and like a bit more moody very like cool street style Parisian kind of vibe so I have those three presets and then they all have their own three different versions inside um, so one thing that I do want to stress about presets is that as much as it is kind of like a one-stop shop you can do your own edit on top of it. And I think it's really important to do that. I mean, sometimes I'll shoot in really, really bright light. Sometimes I'll shoot in really dark light. And if I add the same preset to those two photos, I will not get the same result. I will need to add a little bit of my own edit on top of that to try and get the images to look as cohesive as possible. So I would definitely recommend investing in some presets. Um, obviously I've got my own, you don't have to shop them. Loads of people do presets and there are some girls that are absolutely killing the preset game and they have loads and loads and loads of different presets that you can buy. I personally like to keep it as simple as possible which is why I only have three packs and then my feed looks really, really cohesive. Everything like flows together and that's what makes me happy is when my feed 
looks beautiful and everything looks cohesive and together and planned out that's my vibe and then the last thing that i wanted to talk you through is planning your feed now i think planning is probably one of the most important things when it comes to instagram and when it comes to creating an aesthetically pleasing grid so i personally use the app unum now i'll actually show you um what it looks like it's a free app that you can download and it's my personal favorite when it comes to planning your grid i think it's the most easy to use and the most like aesthetically pleasing for me um so this is what the app looks like you literally just have this little grid feature and then you can move the um squares along so that you can see what the images will look like so these are what i've got planned for the next few days this might well change um there have been times where i like shoot on wednesday and they'd be like actually i want to change what friday's post is going to be and then i can just move things around i can see what they look like and have a bit of a play and it's definitely my favorite app to use when it comes to planning my content now i usually have about six posts in the pipeline that i have planned if it gets down to about three i start to stress and I know some people are the kind of people that just, they only plan like a day in advance. And that's totally fine. If you're that kind of a person, I am definitely not. I like to have everything planned out in advance so I know exactly what it's going to look like. Now, I also like to plan my captions. This I won't plan too far in advance, usually maybe like the night before or that day for the evening. Um, so I always post at 8am in the morning and... To be perfectly honest, my brain is not working at 8am. I can't think of a funny or witty or clever caption to come up with at 7.30 in the morning just before I post the photo. So I usually come up with a caption the night before. I'll think of something funny or witty or whatever I want to say about the post. And I will save it in Instagram. And then it means that when it comes to the morning, I can literally click on the app, go onto the post that I had saved and post it. And I don't need to even think about what the caption says because I'm too tired to do that. <laughs> And then another thing I'll also do is plan my hashtags. Now I know no one will be surprised to hear that hashtags are very, very important when it comes to Instagram. They can really make or break your reach. So I like to plan my hashtags in advance and I personalize each post's hashtag. So if it's a post about a River Island top, I will look up the best hashtags for River Island tops, detail, uh, at home style and I will post the hashtags that work best with that if it's a flat lay I'll post the best flat lay hashtags and it really really helps with engagement and with reach and how many people find your image I find if you use really generic hashtags you're just not going to get that reach and obviously if you spend hours planning and curating a feed you want as many people to see it as possible so make sure to invest some time in hashtags maybe even just save a little note um, on your phone and you can just have some hashtags that you like to go back to and pull out and then you can go back to them quite quickly and easily and you don't have to like think about it too much <sighs> okay i feel like that's it i need a very very tall glass of water because my voice is really hurting now i feel like i've just literally gone blah with my words at you um but i really hope you guys enjoyed this video do let me know if you'd like one more about the kind of like growing on Instagram, my tips for like growing an audience and getting to the point where you can go full time because I am a full time blogger now um, and it has taken me a while to get there. So let me know if you'd like like a part two on this. Let me know if that's the kind of thing you'd like to see and I'll definitely do a part two for you. But if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up and comment down below. If you have got this far, leave me a little phone emoji in the comments. I'd love to know who's managed to get this far in the video because, oh my God, it is a long one. But I really hope you guys enjoyed it and please do subscribe if you'd like to see more and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.